In 2017, I met my ex-girlfriend, who I'll call Mrs. V. I was 19 at the time, and she was 18. We met through mutual friends while hanging out in a park. From the moment I saw her, she seemed like the ideal girlfriend. She was friendly, always smiling, and had this aura of positivity about her. To everyone around us, she appeared to be a solid 8 out of 10. No one could have guessed what lay ahead or how quickly things would change once we started dating. For the first few years, I thought we had something special. But in reality, things were slowly unraveling behind the scenes. Our relationship seemed to be going smoothly for the most part. We were together for three and a half years, and in the beginning, everything felt right. We spent time traveling around the country, going on road trips and making memories. I was even close with her family, particularly her mom and younger sister. I genuinely enjoyed helping them with things, whether it was running errands or assisting with personal problems. I felt like I was building something meaningful, and she seemed happy to, or at least that's what I thought. Everything changed in December of 2018 when Mrs. V told me she wasn't feeling good in the relationship and needed a pause. Her words hit me out of nowhere. I couldn't understand why she felt this way when, in my mind, our relationship was going well. We had just been on a trip together and spent so much time bonding. I had even gone out of my way to support her family, doing everything I could to be a reliable partner. It didn't make sense that she suddenly needed space. But despite my confusion, I reluctantly agreed, thinking maybe she needed time to sort through her feelings. Less than two weeks later, in January 2019, I found out that she had been seeing another guy during the so-called pause. This guy was everything I wasn't. He was wealthy, athletic, and clearly spent hours in the gym. At that time, I wasn't in great shape, weighing about 80 kilograms, and I didn't have much money. It stung to realize that she had quickly moved on to someone who seemed better in her eyes. I learned about this from a friend, who, as it turned out, had been told by Mrs. V's own friend. This friend had been manipulating Mrs. V, convincing her that I was a loser who couldn't provide for her. When I confronted Mrs. V about it, she gave me the standard excuse. We were on a break. Nothing serious happened. She even claimed she hadn't been intimate with the guy. Surprisingly, many people backed her up, telling me she hadn't crossed any lines. Against my better judgment, I chose to forgive her and move on, but the damage was done. In my heart, I knew things would never be the same again. As the months went by, her behavior toward me started to change, and not for the better. She became distant, cold, and indifferent. I tried everything I could to bring us back to how we used to be. I even took out loans to buy her expensive gifts, thinking they would make her happy. I bought her a mobile phone, a laptop, and even a used car that I paid to repair. I was willing to do anything to keep her in my life, but no matter what I did, it felt like I was losing her more and more each day. By the time we reached 2020, our relationship had reached a tipping point. In May, we decided to go on vacation, and I paid for the entire trip. She insisted on bringing her mom and sister along, which I didn't mind since I was still close with them. But after the vacation, something shifted even more drastically. She started pulling away from me completely. She avoided spending time with me, distanced herself from my family, and barely made an effort to communicate. It was like she was slowly cutting me out of her life, piece by piece. Then, in November 2020, I received a series of bizarre text messages from her. They were complete gibberish, just random letters and nonsense. When I finally got in touch with her, she told me she was drunk at a friend's house and needed me to pick her up. I rushed to the address she gave me, but on the way, I got a call from her friend, warning me not to come because there was a man at the house who wanted to beat me up. Confused and worried, I drove there anyway. When I arrived, the supposed threat wasn't what I expected. Instead of being attacked, I was greeted politely by the same guy who was supposed to hurt me. It was all so strange. When I brought Mrs. V home that night, she was still drunk and started talking nonsense, saying things like, I wish I were single so I could screw around with guys and have fun with girls. Her words felt like a punch to the gut. 
The next day, when I confronted her while she was sober, she broke down in tears, apologizing and saying she didn't mean any of it. She insisted she still loved me, but her apologies felt hollow. The cracks in our relationship were growing, and I was beginning to see that things weren't going to get better. In December, Mrs. V's behavior became even more erratic. She started going out to parties frequently, and my friends told me they saw her with Mr. D, the same guy she had been seen with earlier. I was invited to one of these parties, and although nothing seemed suspicious at the time, my gut told me something was wrong. Mrs. V had always shared her phone location with me during our relationship, but one night, she turned it off for the first time. A couple of days later, Mrs. V called me, saying she was going to her mom's new place and that she'd be gone for two days. But later that day, a friend of mine called to tell me he had seen her car parked on a street in a town nowhere near her mom's place. Suspicion washed over me. I tried calling her, but her phone was off. I knew something was up. I started digging deeper and found out where Mr. D lived. I asked Mrs. V's mom how often she visited and pieced together the puzzle. I had enough circumstantial evidence to believe she was cheating, but I still didn't have concrete proof. That proof came in January 2021. Mrs. V had left her phone location on, and I saw that she was at the hill above my old place, a spot we used to go to often. I woke up my neighbor and asked him to drive me there in his car, which she wouldn't recognize. When we got there, my worst fears were confirmed. I saw Mrs. V in the car I had bought for her, the car I had taken out a loan for, performing oral sex on Mr. D. My heart shattered. When she realized someone had seen them, she turned her phone off. A little while later, she called me, pretending like nothing was wrong, saying she thought she had seen me on the hill. I confronted her with what I had seen, and to my shock, she showed up at my place with Mr. D still in the car. He had no idea she had a boyfriend. She had told him that she bought the car herself and that we had broken up long ago. She had been lying to everyone, including herself. What came next was even more painful. Mrs. V admitted that she had cheated on me with over 20 different men during our relationship, including one while we were on vacation, a vacation I had paid for. Her excuse? You were asleep and not paying attention to me. Hearing her say those words broke something inside me. Throughout our relationship, Mrs. V had been emotionally and mentally abusive. She spread rumors that I was abusive toward her, told lies to our friends, and manipulated every situation to make herself look like the victim. After the relationship ended, I was diagnosed with severe depression. I had to get tested for STDs, but luckily I didn't have any. The emotional scars, however, remain. Today, I'm living in Austria with a new girlfriend, trying to rebuild my life. But the trust issues from that toxic relationship still haunt me. I've learned the hard way that you should never ignore your instincts and that sometimes the people you love the most can betray you in the worst ways. It's a painful lesson, but one I'll carry with me forever. In conclusion, we hope this video has helped you gain a deeper understanding of the topic discussed. Remember, knowledge is power, and the more you learn, the more you grow and develop. We encourage you to continue exploring this subject and others like it. Feel free to share your thoughts and experiences with us in the comment section below. Thank you for watching, and now, let's move on to the next story. The story I'm about to share is one of deep hurt, betrayal, and difficult decisions. Last Valentine's Day, when I was six months pregnant, I discovered that my husband had been cheating on me. He is in the Navy and had been in training in Florida, so I flew out to visit him, hoping to spend some quality time together. But from the moment I arrived, something fell off. He was acting distant and strange, and after a while, I asked to see his phone. At first, he tried to brush me off, claiming that his therapist had advised against us checking each other's phones, saying it wasn't healthy. This struck me as odd since I had never done that to him, but he had admitted to snooping through my phone in the past. He quickly turned the situation around, accusing me of being unfaithful, despite having no evidence of that. He brought up an old conversation I'd had with a man at a bar when we were still just casually dating and not yet engaged. I had forgotten about this exchange, but it was innocent, 
It was simply me talking about podcasts and how lucky I was to have him in my life. The conversation didn't go beyond that. But as the days went by, I became more and more suspicious of his behavior. When I pressed him again for his phone during our stay in an Airbnb, he hesitated and then reluctantly handed it over. But as I tried to look through it, he yanked it back from me. In a panic, I locked myself in the bathroom to examine it. And that's when I uncovered everything. The evidence was clear. Messages from over 20 different women, many of whom he had been flirting with, exchanging compliments, and even sending explicit photos. Some of the conversations included addresses and videos. I was shocked and devastated, especially because he had been tracking me via GPS without my knowledge for months. He had been so secretive and dishonest, and here I was pregnant alone and feeling utterly betrayed. At this point, my suspicions had already been mounting for a while, and I was already struggling emotionally. My mental health had taken a toll long before this, as I have a history of trauma and PTSD from long-term abuse. After we got married, my husband insisted that I disclose the details of my past, telling me that since we were married now, he needed to know everything. I made a joke about it, but over time, he kept pressuring me to open up. The interrogations became more intense, and eventually, I caved and told him some of the details, hoping it would put an end to the conversation. It didn't. His questioning and the emotional toll it took on me only worsened my PTSD symptoms, triggering nightmares, migraines, and crippling anxiety. It got so bad that I had to go to the ER for one of the worst migraines I'd ever experienced. I had no family nearby, so I called the only person I felt comfortable with at the time, my ex-boyfriend. He had been a good friend and had helped me through a tough period. My husband knew about this friendship, and while initially uncomfortable with it, he seemed to accept it. After my daughter was born, things continued to spiral. My husband had asked for a paternity test, which only added to my emotional turmoil. He told me this less than 48 hours after I gave birth. The nurses even considered keeping me in postpartum recovery for an extra day because of how deeply upset I was. I was devastated. His doubts about being the father felt like a slap in the face after everything that had happened. He later visited us for a short time, but again, he was distant. He even went out partying to celebrate becoming a father, without any consideration for me or our newborn. When I tried to call him to check in on the baby, it took him hours to respond. I felt utterly abandoned, not just by him, but by the life I had imagined for us. I confronted him about his lack of involvement, and he became defensive, blaming my family and accusing me of being an unfit mother. His words stung, and I was still physically struggling to recover from childbirth, unable to even get up without pain. I asked him to leave my house, repeatedly raising my voice until he finally did. He left behind his wallet, and when I didn't immediately return it to him, he sent his friends to contact me. I was furious at his audacity. I made it clear that if he came back to my house, I would involve the police. I needed peace, not more chaos and stress from the person who had already hurt me so much. I planned to drop his wallet off at the base where he was stationed. But when I got home, my roommate told me that he had sent the police to my apartment, claiming that I was hiding from him. Later that day, I received a call from Child Protective Services, CPS, accusing me of neglecting my newborn daughter. My heart sank. The emotional and psychological toll of the situation had already been overwhelming, and now this. Thankfully, after a lawyer's advice, CPS decided not to pursue the matter further, but the mere fact that I was being accused of neglecting my baby was a nightmare. It felt like everything was being turned against me, and I was losing control over my life. Fast forward to the present. My husband continues to try to guilt trip me. He insists I facilitate video calls with our daughter, but I can't bring myself to do it. The thought of him having access to her, especially given all the pain he caused, makes me sick to my stomach. I offered him a chance to visit for her first Christmas, but he declined, choosing instead to spend time in Florida with friends and family. Now, he's blaming me for not arranging video calls and sending photos of our daughter. 
His behavior feels manipulative, and it only adds to the emotional weight I'm already carrying. I feel torn between trying to co-parent for the sake of our daughter and protecting her from a man who has proven time and again that he cannot be trusted. It's been emotionally exhausting. I don't know what to do anymore. I've tried to be fair, but he has shown no remorse, no real apology for everything he put me through. His actions speak volumes, and I am left with nothing but resentment and hurt. I'm trying to figure out how to navigate this co-parenting arrangement, but every interaction with him feels forced, and I'm not sure I can keep going like this. The situation continues to unfold, and I'm at a loss for how to proceed. My priority is protecting my daughter and myself, and at this point, that means setting firm boundaries with him. I cannot continue to let his manipulation and guilt trips dictate how I live my life or how I raise my child. I've tried to move on, but the pain from everything he's done still lingers. I just want peace and stability, something that seems impossible with him in the picture. It's a daily struggle, but I'm doing my best to stay strong and keep my focus on what's best for my daughter.